Oh, okay. Well. You guys are ready when you guys are. Uh, how do you feel about tonight? You gave uh, you know a speech thanking everyone, and you, you seem like you're still in good spirits. How do you? Feel oh yeah, about I am. You know, nobody died here tonight, and and um, the the people in the 32nd have voted. I respect that so very much, and. Uh, uh, the will of the people is the law of the land. That's what's uh, on the ceiling in the governor's uh, reception room, and, and I abide by that, and, and I'm comfortable with that. I did everything I could. I got my message out there as, as I wanted. Um, what, what else can you say? The people have uh, registered their opinion, and um, I honor that. You said you've never, I'm sorry, never been more proud of your message in the campaign. Do you regret your vote for the collective bargaining? No, absolutely not, especially when we see, you know, the results, uh, the early results of what's happened. And uh, Wisconsin is on the right track, and we are paying our bills, and our bond rating has improved, and we're growing jobs in Wisconsin. And, boy, there's a lot of other states that are looking at Wisconsin and saying, you know, look what they did. Why can't we? What's next? Oh, that's, uh, you know, I'm going to go to bed sometime tonight, <laughs> but I'm not sure, you know, tomorrow I get up, I'll probably be out in uh, throughout the 32nd uh, and pulling some signs down and uh, talking to some of my supporters and friends out there. What's next for your political career? Considering you run for the 95th at all? It's, um, it's very, very early to uh, even think about that. Um, I wanted to get through tonight, August 9th, and like I said, tomorrow, you know, my path will be a little bit more clear and uh, we'll see what happens. Didn't think in your vein. The voters didn't think in your vein is an expression you use. Well, why do you think that was? What didn't register this time that's registered in the past? Well, I, I think, again, it was a very controversial vote that um, 18 of us took in the state Senate. And certainly that upset a lot of people because it, it changed, uh, you know, it changed some lives of some people. They, they started contributing to their own pensions and their own health insurance. And, um, when we were facing a $3.6 billion deficit, um, something different had to be done. And so we took an extraordinary measure uh, to address a, an extraordinary situation. And obviously that didn't sit well with people um, in the 32nd. Now, I'm not sure if we lost other senators or not. I know that there's one race in the 18th that's close. But it looks like hopefully, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that the, uh, the uh, Senate has been held by the Republicans. and so. When I mentioned that we um, we lost the battle here, but hopefully we've won the war. You said it was hard. You had to be there. You said that in your speech that you had to be there for that. Can you give us a little glimpse into being there? Well, we were um, again. We were um, sequestered in a, in a in a small room for a, a long period of time. We had security people all over the place in the Capitol. We had, of course, a lot of visitors in the Capitol. Um, it just was. Again, uh, extraordinary times, and, and uh, we were in, again, waters that we hadn't been in before. So it was difficult, and I want to commend our leadership in the state senate um, and in the assembly and also our governor because uh, it, it was a controversial, difficult decision, and yet they were able to you know, stand up and uh, guide us through that. And uh, today, again, we're, we're looking better than many of the states in the United States because we took... Uh, early action in this two-year biennial budget cycle to address the financial situation that we were facing. Senator, you just you just made a point to support Representative Schilling when you can. Yes. Why did you want to make that point? Well, because she's now our elected representative and, and uh, a senator. And I, I received support from both sides of the aisle when I was the uh, senator in the, in the 32nd, and uh, she should be afforded that same opportunity. Uh, when possible. I mean, there's people out here, obviously, that are not always going to agree with, with any legislator, and, and uh, so that'll be the case. But I think where we can support her, she is a senator, I think that's what we have to do. As we mentioned before, we don't see everything that happens when you're negotiating behind doors, but it's looked more contentious from what we have seen. What has to happen to regain that sort of bipartisan discussion that, that we saw maybe 10 years ago? Well, what I've said all along is that it's incumbent upon each one of us as elected officials to do our part. When we get up in the morning and look in the mirror, uh, we need to ask our qu a question, and that is, what exactly am I doing to reach across the aisle to, to, to bring civility back, to, to bring this, uh, uh, this concept that two sides can work together uh, in so many different areas? And that has been the case in the past. In my six and a half years, many of the bills have been passed in a very bipartisan manner. But this one bill, again, we get down to this one bill that has, uh, again, divided this state uh, and brought on these recalls. And, and now, once we get past these recalls, 
let's settle into our jobs, let's do our jobs, and let's represent all the people and work together when we can. What do you think is next in Madison? What's the next priority? What's going to happen? Well, I think uh, they'll stay on the same uh, uh, path of growing jobs. I think that's number one. If we grow jobs in Madison, we're going to be able to get the revenues in Madison that we need to address maybe the second year of K-12 education, which is uh, problematic for many school districts. Or we're going to be able to do more as far as uh, uh, taking care of our elderly and, and so on and Medicaid. There's a big hole in Medicaid. So we need to do that, but we can do it if we grow jobs without raising taxes. And that was the whole thing. When we're in a downward economic cycle, to take more money out of the private sector is a job killer. What we wanted to do is balance our budget without doing that, and we were able to do that with this two-year biennial budget. Now we need to stay on path, grow jobs like we have in the first six months of this uh, year, and, and then send more revenues to Madison so we don't have to raise taxes and yet provide the services that the people of Wisconsin deserve and need. When you look back at Well, I, I think I think you can always look back 2020, and like I said here in my speech, you had to be there. You know, you had to be there to understand the dynamics of the situation and the climate at the Capitol. Um, we worked our way through that. There were many, many, many people there um, protesting and um, voicing their concerns, and they have a right and had a right to do that. And I would fight very hard for that right, and so many people in uniform have. So that's that's not the issue. The issue was. I mean, just me getting in the Capitol and, and getting up to my office was difficult at times. So, you know, there was just, again, the dynamics there were, were much different. Now, that has all subsided, um, you know, and hopefully, again, get these recalls behind us. Let's get down to the business of, of uh, serving the people of Wisconsin. You mentioned the loggers' three-day homestand. Now, huh. what, what's that for you? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to finish the year with the loggers, of course, and, and uh, we've got we've got big things there going as well. We want to extend our contract with the city of La Crosse, and we started negotiations before the season, and so we want we want to finish that. And uh, there's other things that we that I want to do as far as the loggers are concerned. But above and beyond that, I have no idea. You know, I, I was excited for tomorrow morning um, because I know that I was going to be. Uh, as a 32nd state senator, or my life was going to change, and I'm excited about that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.